Hello everyone, and welcome to week 34 of the Religious Education Initiative here at St. George. This week is Holy Week uh, in the Orthodox Church, so we're going to go a little bit in a different direction. We have been reading about the journey of the Israelites through the wilderness on their way to the Promised Land, and last time we saw Joshua prepare to finally lead them in. Now after they entered the land, they eventually fell into sin once again and then many times, and God sent them many prophets to call them to repentance and also to tell them how he was going to save them and all the world in the future, even if and when they failed to repent. One of these prophets, named Isaiah, prophesied in remarkable detail what would happen to the Lord when he came and how he would save us through his suffering. So this is from chapter 53 of the prophecy of Isaiah. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured himself out to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Now, this is a passage that we read in the church uh, during the royal hours of Holy Friday that morning uh, as we reflect on the Lord hanging upon the cross. Uh, it's a favorite passage of the church from the very beginning. Even in the book of Acts, we see when the deacon Philip is taken away and is rather sent by God into the wilderness and he meets the Ethiopian eunuch. It is from the prophecy of Isaiah that this uh, court official of the Ethiopian queen is reading and he's reading this passage and he asks Philip to explain it to him and Philip explains it preaching Christ and his crucifixion to him. We see it all over the place in the further life of the church. It is one of the clearest uh, of, of many extremely clear prophecies of the Lord's coming, of the Lord's passion. Uh, what it shows to us is the, uh, the paradoxical reality of, uh, of the Lord's ministry, of his presence in this world, that he did not come in glory, he did not come in power, that no one recognized him, no one saw him for who he was and desired him or loved him or was awed by him. Uh, he was rather despised, he was afflicted, he was rejected, uh, he was held of no account. Um, this is what we've seen about Jesus throughout what we've read in the Gospels. You know, people are fascinated by him, but especially those in authority, they despise him, they hate him, uh, they, they, they oppose themselves to him. Um, 
And then it says, surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. So saying he has carried, he has experienced all of the burdens, the sorrows of this human life. But we, we looked at him and we considered that he was stricken, that he was afflicted, that he was struck down by God. We looked at Jesus and we considered that he was judged by God. Uh, we being, in this case, identifying ourselves with the Pharisees, with uh, those who saw Jesus on the cross and, and, and considered him to be, you know, judged justly by God since he was, you know, on the cross, he must deserve it, was the argument. Um, and then it goes further and says, but, but just because we thought that he deserved it, just because we thought that he was just being judged by God, doesn't mean we're right. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that makes us whole, the, the burden, uh, the, the agony that makes us whole, that heals us, was on him. And by his bruises, we are healed. Um, and then it begins to talk about what the Lord has laid on him. The, the hidden reality in this is uh, the text talks about the Lord laying this and laying that on this suffering servant. Uh, what is hidden here is is that you know, obviously it would be unjust for God to lay a penalty uh, that is deserved by you know one group of people on someone who doesn't deserve it. So the only just way for this to be fulfilled is for God to lay this on Himself, uh, and this is of course what we see in the incarnation. Um, it's worth noting as well. Uh, the passages from verse 7 through verse 8, these are actually something that the priest recites every time he celebrates the liturgy when he cuts out the amnos, the, the lamb, uh, when he's doing the liturgy, when he cuts out the, what will be consecrated as the body of the Lord from the prosphora uh, loaf, from the offered loaf. Uh, he says, like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter, and like a sheep before his shearer is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his standing, his justice, uh, his judgment was stripped from him, and who will tell what is his tribe? This is, it's been translated in many different ways. This translation says, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, like a sheep that before his shearer is silent, so he didn't open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? Uh, so, Tiste yanayan adhihisete, I believe, is the Greek. Uh, who could give an, give an, an account of his generation? Um, so, regardless, it speaks of the, uh, the ill judgment, the uh, denial of justice that Jesus received when he was standing trial, how no one wanted to claim him, uh, everyone rejected him. And, and, and no one could tell, you know, who he was because everyone, you know, didn't want him. As we even saw last time, Pilate and Herod, uh, actually two weeks ago, Pilate and Herod sent him back and forth, both of them saying, not my problem, I think that's a Herod thing, and Herod saying, no, 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 that, that's a Pilate sort of thing. So even this we see uh, fulfilled. Um, and, uh, you know, that they made his grave with the wicked, uh, you know, he died between two thieves and his tomb with the rich. He was buried in the tomb of a rich man, of Joseph of Arimathea. Uh, even though he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, which is what the, uh, the repentant thief says, uh, even as he's hanging on the cross and confesses him. So uh, what we see here is uh, a ancient depiction of the Lord's passion um, long before he experienced it. Uh, Isaiah foretold it, and uh, and therefore we read it again every Holy Friday to understand what the Messiah was going to come to do and what he indeed did do and does do for us. So may the Lord grant us all understanding and repentance and joy as we encounter him uh, and receive him risen from the tomb this coming Pascha. God be with you all. Kalianastasi.